Walter Reed has been open for 25 years now. I probably see at least 50 films a year here, if not more. I've probably seen at least 500 films here, if not, if not, if not a thousand or more. There have been so many outstanding moments here, but one has seen retrospectives with, say, an actor like Richard Widmark, where he's in attendance at many of the films. It's a very different experience from seeing a film in a commercial theater where you're just buying the popcorn and going in and seeing whatever Hollywood is dishing out. I'm Joanne Koch. I was executive director of the Film Society of Lincoln Center starting in 1971 until 2003. That's 32 years. <laughs> the Film Society really had no home of its own. It had the festival at, at Alice Tully Hall, and we combined with MoMA to do new directors, but we really needed to have a home. And Lincoln Center had a chance to by the property that now holds the Rose Building. And we lobbied to get a niche within the building for our own film theater, and it succeeded, and we went to work. Hi, I'm Marion Massoni. Massoni, okay. Yeah. Hi, I'm taking This is Don shoes. Shul. Hello, Don Shul. Yeah. Not Shula. No, Shu no, not Shula. <laughs> I'm with the Film Society. Ah, it's your, it's your place, right? Right. It's November 8th. I was there 25 years ago when we were building and launching the, uh, the Walter Reed Theater. Okay, it's week three of the Shul Tapes documenting the Walter Reed Theater in progress. We're going inside. This is Sid McGrath, he's with Davis Brody, so this is a man in the know who knows what's going on here. So what are they doing, Sid? Uh, right now they're constructing uh, the western masonry wall that goes in before the drywall finish uh -huh. wall goes in. And the stage work is to begin eventually soon, also up at the north end there. Okay, so this is the stage end looking towards 65th Street. It's going to be big, big screen. Oh, this is the, this is the box office. Ticket window, yes. So there's the entrance of the theater with its lovely sign. And over here, it actually says the Film Society of Lincoln Center which is very attractive. The thing about Lincoln Center is just that it's a big, kind of like daunting, architecturally pretentious place that was designed to be a cultural hub for the world. And that cinema was then, you know, a year-round part of it. I mean, that really meant something, and it still does. It remains one of the loveliest theaters, both aesthetically and in terms of projection and comfort, sight lines, the lobby, the access to the gallery afterwards. It's something that we remain very, very proud of. I not only remember when the Walter Reed was being built, I was here on the very first day for the very first show of On the Town as a, as a paying customer. I mean, you know, and it was, very, it was a very small audience, I think, that we had. It was like me and, you know, 12 people or something like that. We started December 8th, 1991, and for about the first year and a half, things were a little bit up and down. I mean, we had some series that did well, others that did not so well. I think we we're finding a groove. In uh, April of 1993, we did this very, very large African film show. That was an enormous success. That really broke all house records. And that, I think, more than anything else, established the Walter Reed, not only for the kind of program that we became known for, which was international cinema, but just as a place where you're going to see new and exciting things. Well, good evening and welcome. Uh, on behalf of the Directors Guild of America and the Film Society of Lincoln Center, we'd like to Thank you all for coming to our special panel tonight, looking at the meaning and the impact of the auteur theory in America over the last three decades. I ruined my college career by going to all the movies in the New York area. And, and so when I wrote this, this essay, I had just discovered André Bazin, and I discovered Cahiers de Cinema, and I discovered the Politique des Auteurs, and I discovered a new way of thinking about movies. If I'm left alone, and it's quiet, mm -hmm and we're in the editing room, mm -hmm. and the phone is stopped, and they're not coming to get me. 
know what I mean? Yeah. There's Thelma and myself, and this thing happens on the screen. Mm -hmm. Even though it's now done with computer, something happens, and this cut goes from one cut to another, the image changes, and then there's something that happens in between that cut. It, it's like a third idea mm -hmm. that occurs. The Walter Reed Theater, now 25 years old, has remained consistent in its mission of supporting and exploring cinema from around the world. We do that through not only retrospectives and special events, but through festivals year-round. Good film programming is very much engaged with the culture around it, the context around it. For us, it's about to be eclectic, um, to be expansive, but also, I think, to be, to be coherent, to, to have a sense that there is a point of view behind the programming. It, in many ways, I think, is an extension of the programming that uh, Richard developed in, in 25 years here. There is, I think, a real openness and a real emphasis on cinema that's relevant today, but also rediscovering filmmakers, uh, rediscovering certain periods of history. So it's always very much with one eye on the present and, and one eye on the past. The Walter Reed is not only an excellent place to watch a movie, um, but there's this incredible stage. We host Q&As and conversations with artists and directors before and after screenings. These presentations are um, really important, and I think that, you know, the Walter Reed is actually a great space for that. It's been, I think, home to some of the most memorable events that I've attended or that I've presented. The, the film is often described as a, a, a neo-Western or revisionist Western, and I think there are some ways in which it, it, it inverts the conventions of a Western. Um, the character, for instance, is he's very passive. Well, I was interested in the Western as I am with any kind of genre that I might approach. I'm interested in them as a kind of frame within which you can kind of do whatever you want. My favorite um, event that I've been involved with, we uh, orchestrated this meeting between John Waters and Isabel Huppert. It was wonderful. I mean, she's, she's great speaking about her work, but I think having somebody like John there who is such a fan and also so funny uh, and so insightful, uh, I think it really opened her up. One performance that maybe no one's ever asked you about, that's one of, I think, your most amazing performances. In the leaked YouTube footage of Lily Tomlin and David O. Russell having a fight and a breakdown, and you were just sitting there with no reaction as they're going, fuck you, fuck you, fuck you, and you're completely calm, and then suddenly in the best Warholian move, you just check your makeup <laughs> and go, it's my favorite performance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. The Walter Reed Theater is our signature venue, and really so much of our programming is anchored in that space. Six years ago, we opened the Eleanor Bean and Monroe Film Center across the street from the Walter Reed as a way to engage new audiences. We really feel that the future of film culture will be sustained and driven by not only the experience of watching movies collectively in a big theater, in a giant hall, but also a curatorial approach. And I think that when you can marry that curatorial approach with community, you have some really important foundations for cinema culture. <laughs>